Hello, brethren. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I am Brother Hosanna David. Welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. This is a non-denominational evangelical ministry. Our work is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and make disciples of all nations. A few days ago, I was lying on my bed and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He told me to play a particular song that I have in my phone. So I hesitated to play it. He spoke to me the second time and told me to play that particular song. He didn't just tell me to play it, but he told me that I should put it in a repeat mode. So I put it on repeat. So that song played over and over and over again. As the song was playing, he spoke to me and told me, preach, when next you preach? Preach about my judgment. If you have not subscribed to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations, please subscribe to this channel. Also turn on the notification bell so that you can receive updates whenever I post a new video. The local song in my phone talks about the judgment of God. So I decided to play the song as I was instructed. Early hours of this morning, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and gave me a message. The message is to three different groups of persons. Number one, it is a message to those who are believers but have some weaknesses in their lives. Then secondly, it is a message to unbelievers and churchgoers. Then thirdly, it is a message to those who believe in the Lord but are possessed with one or two evil spirits, I mean demonic spirits. There is a message that God has for them. So this message is for these three sets of people. Before I go into this message, please share this video. Share this video so that it can reach as many people as the Lord wants this video to reach. So that when they get this message, they can amend their ways. As usual, I'm going to read the message from where I wrote it. This is the first part of this message and it is to Christians who have weaknesses. I mean weaknesses in their Christian lifestyle, maybe in one or two areas of their lives. Tell all those who are serving me never to give up because of their weaknesses. They should be zealous for good works, repent whenever they sin, and wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. They must not drop their cross because of their personal weaknesses. I am the Lord. I do not reject my children because they are weak but because they refuse to be healed and be changed. A number two message goes to unbelievers and churchgoers. Tell all those who do not know me, and all those who go to church but are unserious that danger is coming. They need a safe refuge to hide. Then he said, If you know anyone that is stronger than the Lord God Almighty, go and take refuge in him, because it shall be too terrible for you on that day. But if you can't find anyone, better reconcile with your maker now. The day of the Lord is going to be very, very terrible. The day of the Lord is going to be a day of anger. It is going to be a day of recompense. It is going to be a day that the Lord is going to release the wrath that has, he has been treasuring for thousands of years. It is going to be a day that Satan and his fallen angels are going to be bound and cast into the bottomless pit. It is going to be a very dangerous day. It is going to be a day that the mountains will move out of their places. It is going to be a day that people will cry and call on the rocks and call on the mountains to fall on them and hide them from the face of the one who is coming to judge the world. It is going to be a very terrible day. If you have not reconciled with God, please do so now. If you know anyone that has power more than God that is going to deliver you from his hand on that day, then you go ahead and strike a deal with him. But I want to let you know that God Almighty is omnipotent. 
Nobody is bigger than him. Nobody is stronger than him. Nobody can outwit him. Nobody can overpower him. With the word of his mouth, he created all things. We are like vapor in his sight. So don't think that you are powerful or your wisdom is going to save you on that day. That day is going to be very, very terrible. You better reconcile with your God right now. Reconcile with your maker right now. It's time for genuine repentance. The Holy Spirit explained to me why he wanted me to repeat the song, to put it in a repeat mode. He said, now, this season is a time that the word of repentance and his judgment, preparation, preparing mankind for his return should be repeated every time. He wants the word of reminder to be repeated before the ears of men. He wants me to repeat it. He wants you who are believers to continue to repeat this. Repeat it to yourself every time. Remind yourself that the Lord is coming soon. Remind those around you. Remind those who are in your workplaces that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. The signs are everywhere that He is coming and He is not far away anymore. He is definitely coming. The third message is to those who have believed in the Lord but are harboring one or two demons in themselves. He said, Tell those who believe in me but are possessed with demonic spirits not to give up on their faith in me. Tell them to do this. They must seek me daily with sincerity of heart. Let them look for deliverance. But why they seek deliverance? They must stop the destruction with evil powers. I am the Lord. I am the God of justice. I will not spare the wicked. If they continue in their evils, even if they continue to call on me for mercy. Let me explain this. Those who have accepted the Lord, but are still harboring some evil spirits in them, the Lord doesn't want these people to remain the way they are. He wants them to come to repentance by allowing these demons to leave them. Go for deliverance. I know there are some preachers who say you don't need any deliverance. You just need to confess Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart. Go for baptism and you are saved. It is more than that. You need to allow yourself to be delivered from the powers of darkness inside of you. If you have demonic spirits, if you have covenants, you need to break them. You need to let those spirits go. Jesus himself cast out demons and he also said we should go and cast out demons in Mark 16. Casting out demons is one of the assignment that is given to us in the Great Commission. We are not to harbor these demons in ourselves while we proclaim that we are of the Lord. The body is of the Lord. It is not for demons. As we go through this message, you are going to understand better why the Lord wants you to go for deliverance. And while you seek for deliverance, the Lord also wants you to resign from doing evil. This can be really hard, but there is nothing that is too difficult for God to do. I know there are some people who do evil, not because they want to do evil, but because the spirit in them pushes them to do evil. I have been in the deliverance ministry for many years. As a matter of fact, I started conducting deliverance when I was still in junior high school. Just in junior secondary school, by accident, I had to conduct deliverance for someone on a crossover um, service, December 31, as we were trying to cross over. She wanted to die and she was saying, uh, wait for me, wait for me in her local dialect, Igbo. She was saying, wait for me, wait for me, uh, wait for me. It was, I asked somebody, what is she saying? Uh, they, they told me, she is saying, wait for me, wait for me that it was time for her to depart because of the covenant she had with the marine kingdom and that was how there was nobody to conduct deliverance for her i had to force myself out and i was i had to do it and i followed her up 
Even then, I knew I would do the work of God, but I wasn't ready, I had no experience. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes, these people who are possessed could be very much ready in their heart to stop doing evil, but the Spirit pushes them. Apart from the Spirit, those they are in the same kingdom with can still give them assignment and force them to do evil. There was this lady who actually wanted to repent some time ago. She was having a banjo spirit, that marine spirit. She was having a spirit spouse and she was into witchcraft, black witchcraft. So I, I was talking to her and I was coughing and I said, please, can you give me a little salt? Because I was told if you, if you take salt, just a pinch of salt and you're coughing, it suits your throat so that you don't cough too much. So she brought the salt. The Holy Spirit minister told me immediately that she had poisoned the salt. Remember, this is someone that wanted to repent. She poisoned it. And I asked her, what is this? Is this, what is this? She said, it is salt. I said, no, this is not salt. She said, actually, she poisoned it. And I also, the, the Lord opened my eyes. I also saw that she was putting on so a kind of cream on her body so i asked her what about this cream and she told me that the spirit spouse put that cream upon her so that i mean cream pomade so that when I, when when i see her i would become weak and become seduced instead of me to conduct the deliverance i would be doing another thing with her and sleep with her it can be really, really terrible and difficult. But if you are determined in your heart and you really want to be free, definitely you will be free. Don't submit to these powers. If you submit to them, they are going to continue to use it to do evil. There is another set of people who have resolved in their hearts to do evil. And whenever they do evil, they go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, we are sinners. Please have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my sins. I just killed. I just destroyed. I just poisoned. Let me tell you, the Lord will never answer those prayers. You cannot continue to do evil and have a wickedness in your heart and continue to ask the Lord for mercy. God doesn't listen to the prayers of sinners. He only listens to the prayers of repentant sinners. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. God will never despise a broken and a contrite heart. But if your heart is not broken, if it is not contrite, the Lord will despise it. He doesn't listen to the prayers of sinners. Let's continue with the message. Let those who resist my spirit and suppress my work repent from such and ask God for mercy. Then he said, let go of your pride and be humble enough to seek deliverance. I pity some of you because you have been deceived. Some of you give so much to support my work. Some pastors have made you to believe that by giving towards my work, you have been accepted by me. This is a lie. Those who do not have my spirit do not belong to me. This is the truth. Remember what uh, Romans 8 verse 9 says, I read, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you belong to Jesus Christ, you must have his spirit inside of you. If you don't have his spirit, if there are demons harboring your life, you do not belong to him. You are the temple of God. It is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God that's supposed to live in you and not demons. Let's continue. Giving does not give you access to the free gift of salvation, but repentance. No one has ever made it into heaven without repentance. You must let go of those spirits that occupy your body and allow me to live in you. If you do not give me access to your body here on earth, 
I will not give you access to my kingdom. Thus so saith the Lord, these people are like polypterous bicha biche, nigh biche to me. From their skin to their heart, they mount up a strong resistance against me. But if they can be humble enough to seek my face, my power will destroy the barrier between us. I will take away their iron skin and soften their stony hearts. My power is ready to deliver as many that are ready to be free. Before I go to the message about how nearer we are to the return of the Lord, let me explain this thing. The Lord showed me a fish, which is what is called Polypterus biche biche, Nile biche. I had to go to the internet to look for it. I know this fish while I was in the village. We used to catch this fish. We used to catch it while we were uh, fishing in the village. The whole of its body is full of scales. Not just scales you can peel off. It is like stony scales. Very hard. I had to go and download this video. Now look at this video. You will see that this fish has a type of scaly skin. These scales are very, very hard. They are really hard. Though the people that eat this fish, they either burn it with fire, they burn the skin, the scales with fire, and thoroughly remove them because it is so hard, it's so, it is stony in nature. You can't bite it. It is so strong. They either use fire to burn it or they put hot water and then peel it off. Peel it off. And it is usually very, very tough to peel it off. This, the, the fish has spines at its back. It, it can, it, it is, in fact, if you hold it, it can enjoy your hand. So in this revelation, I saw this fish. And the Holy Spirit said, So saith the Lord, these people are like this fish that has this tony like or iron-like scales. From their skin to their heart, they mount up a strong resistance against me. This is how the Lord describes those who are possessed, many of those who are possessed, they have, they have mounted up a very strong resistance against the Lord because they don't want anything to enter their heart. As a matter of fact, after the Lord gave me this message, I went to bed this afternoon and He spoke to me. While I was dozing off, I was feeling sleepy, and I was, as I was dozing off, he spoke to me. He told me, after you preach this message, they are going to come after you. I'm preaching it already. Those of you who have hardened hearts, a heart that is seared with a hot iron, let me tell you, you have a destination. And that destination is a lake of fire except you repent. This is a time to repent. This is a time to seek the Lord. This is a time to come out of your evil ways. I can't force you to repent. The Lord can't force you to repent. You have an independent will. You can make your choice. You can say, demons, I don't need you anymore. You also have the right to say, Holy Spirit, I need you or I don't need you anymore. It is your right. Let me tell you something. Between 2006 and 2007, I had so much troubles. After receiving the call of God in 2005, but I was stubborn. I thought I was wise with limited knowledge of the Word of God I was judging God, I called God unjust, 
One of the reasons I rebelled against God was because I saw that so many people were possessed. And I was questioning God that why is it that many people, so many people are possessed, even children. He told me that if they choose to let these spirits go and be free, they will be free. I did not understand. My heart was too dull. And I was asking God, you mean even these children who don't know anything that are possessed, if they grow up and they act out because of the influence of the spirit, you mean you are going to cast them into hell? I saw it as injustice. But the Lord told me that if they grow up and they know what is right and what is good, they can make decisions to be free. But I, my heart was too dull. I stopped going to church. I wanted answers. I questioned God. Why did you drive Satan from heaven? If Satan was giving you trouble in heaven, why did you drive Satan from heaven? Why didn't you, why didn't you just kill him or imprison him? If he was disturbing heaven, you drove him down to us? Why? Is this justice? I questioned God. Let me tell you one thing. I was so frustrated that I even wanted to die. There was a time in my life I resolved that, okay, I need to let God leave me alone. I wanted to let God leave me alone and I told myself, if I start living in fornication, if I sleep with a woman, if I destroy the temple, it would let me go. I just need to go and live my life. I was so frustrated. There were times that I contemplated suicide. I'm telling you the truth. Some of you don't know why I live my life the way I live it. I have rebelled against God. And even while I ha when I had accident, I faced judgment. God gave me another chance. And this is why I don't want to play with this chance. I don't want to play with it. Because I know how fierce it could be. There are some of you who think you are wise. And you want to question God. You want to judge God with your short wisdom. You that do not even know. How many hearts, how many times your heart beats in a day? You don't even know. Because you sleep off. Because you can't even count all of them. You don't even know how your body runs, how your systems, your body systems work. You don't even know. And you're questioning God. Since I repented, I always say, God is always right. God is always right. He tried different means to convince me, but my heart was so hardened. But I suffered for it. Have I stopped suffering some of the consequences till today? No! I am still suffering some of the consequences till today. I fear God. Because a lot of times when He says, I've forgiven you, we live to reap the things we have done the consequences of our actions. A lot of times, they don't go, we reap them. You see Akadai, you see Boko Haram, you see ISIS, you see this level of terrorism in the world today, it was because the one God loved, the one God promised to make a father of many nations, through whom all nations of the earth would be blessed because he disobeyed God. And the repercussion is Ishmael. Ishmael, his children, many of his children have not given the world rest. You see the radical nature of Islam, though they say it's a religion of peace, if you read, if you study Islam, you will know that 
there is no peace. It was because Abraham did not wait enough. He had to do it his own way. And the whole world is paying for it. I resolved one day that if I commit fornication, the Spirit of God will definitely let me go. And I will go. I planned it in my heart. And I said I was going to do it. So that He could let me go. Because I was tired. I was frustrated. I just wanted to go and live my life. Even though it was the way of destruction. I was at the end of my wisdom. I was at the end of my senses. And God helped me. God helped me. Some of those things I passed through humiliated me and humbled me that whenever I think about the things I passed through because of my disobedience, I am humbled in my heart. It was too terrible that even 2007, I had to vow. I made a vow. I told God that God, if you can just save me from fornicating, as we shout Happy New Year and enter 2008, I am going to pay my vow. There was a day I escaped temptation. I had to go to church and pay the vow even before I crossed over to 2008. Let me tell you, it was my decision to let the Spirit of God leave my body. Even though he helped me, he saved me from that foolish decision. You have the right to say, demons, leave me and they will leave you. You have the right to say, God, leave me and he will leave you. In Genesis chapter 6, the Lord said, my spirit will never strive with man. Why? Because God, raised, God was resisted by man. The daughters of men slept with fallen angels. Evil became too much. The spirit of God couldn't continue to strive with man anymore. You can cast all your burden upon the Lord and ask him to deliver you and you will be free but a lot of times some people are too shy some are ashamed some don't want to talk even though you give them all the privacy in the world they don't want to talk some are ashamed but in hell in hell in hell there's no shame in hell is there shame in hell? There is no shame in hell. In hell. Even the things you have forgotten, you will remember them. If you make your way into that place that you are heading to, you will recall all of them and ask God to forgive you. But it will be too late. I'm a pastor. I preach about holiness. But I just told you a secret of my life some years ago, 2007. I just told you. I don't see it as a secret. It was my shame and I have to expose it. It was my foolishness. I have to tell you so that you learn from it. Is there anything that is really secret in this world? In the eyes of men, it is secret. But in the eyes of God, is it secret? The one that formed you in your mother's womb, you have secrets you are hiding from him. Cast all your burden upon him. Cast all those cares upon him. If you go for deliverance and a man of God decides to preach, use you to preach, as some of them do, which is very wrong, then the sin will be upon his own head. As pastors, if people tell you 
their personal secrets in the name of the Lord, you keep those secrets in the name of the Lord. If we were to be, if you were to be a mechanical engineer, or you were to be a pharmacist, or you were to be a pilot, nobody will come to tell you that I have demons in me and I want to change. No, people confide in you in the name of the Lord. So you keep those secrets in the name of the Lord too. I know a lot of ministers have prevented a lot of people from coming out to say, this is who I am in the secret. Because they are afraid. But let me tell you, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. But what I'm saying here is that do not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed enough to go to hell. There is no secret before the Lord. Repent. When I conduct deliverance for people, I tell them. It could cost you your life. You want to come out of the kingdom? It could cost you your physical life. It could cost me my life too. It is a dangerous adventure. But I've conducted deliverance for a number of persons. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead. I'm still alive. And none of them died. The Lord protects. God has power. He protects. Just surrender to Him. Let's continue with this message. This other part of the message is about the return of the Lord and how near we are to the time. Remember I said that the Holy Spirit told me to put the song in my local dialect that talks about the judgment of the Lord. He told me to put it on repeat mode. So I played it a lot of times. He said we should continue to repeat this. We should repeat this to the hearing of men that his coming is near, his judgment is near. Then he said to me, if my children had known how close they are to the end, they would have been at their master's business instead of theirs. But the devil has cast the spirit of bewitchment upon many so that they will not think about the times they live in. Now, tell them that the days are near let the wise seek and take refuge in the name of the Lord before the terrible and awful day comes. Let us know that the day of the Lord is at hand. It is going to be a day of darkness. It is going to be a day of tears. It is going to be a day that there will be no difference between the rich and the poor, the great men and the little men, the mighty of the earth, the leaders, the governors, and the small people of this world. There is going to be no difference because everybody's heart is going to faint. It is going to be a day that the needs of people will no longer be able to bear the weight of their bodies. It is going to be too terrible. This is a time to make amend. Do not be influenced by the bewitchment of the devil. Do not allow anybody to tell you lies. The days are evil. We have to be watchful. The more evil the days become, the nearer the return of the Lord. Before I round off this message, let us read. Revelation chapter 20, 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is a book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. 
and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When people die, we are quick to say, rest in peace. When people depart from this world, we are quick to write ROIP. But let me tell you, that doesn't guarantee anything. Those who are dead are dead. Their works have been sealed. We can't change anything. Our intercessions cannot change anything. Giving them Christian barriers cannot change anything. Only one thing counts. What they have done while in the body. That is what counts. Did they die in the Lord? That is what counts. We see people who go and take their own lives when things are hard. Just like the story I told you about my foolishness, 2007. Even though the Lord saved me. If he hadn't saved me, I would have been dead by now. People take their own lives. Because they believe that when they die, they will leave the troubles of this world. Oh, you will live in the trouble of few years. Not more than 120 years. You are living the trouble to the trouble of eternity is stupidity. That's foolishness of the highest order. It's time to seek the Lord. It is time to come back to the Lord. Because a day is coming where the dead, both small and great, shall stand before the Lord. Those who destroy this world and those who do good in this world Everyone shall stand before the Lord to give account. It is time to get it right. If you haven't gotten it right, get it right now. If you are in Christ and you are weak in your faith, you, have, you, you fall and rise, you rise and fall time after time, don't give up. The message says, don't give up. Cast that weakness upon God. Don't say, I'm not moving forward, why don't I just relax and stop trying? No, the Lord wants you to keep trying. The fact that you are weak does not mean that you are not a child of God. It is just that a part of your body is sick. What you need is healing. Go for healing. Jesus is a great healer. Is a great physician. He will heal you. But if you say, Oh, I keep falling. I don't want to try again. You are passing sentence upon yourself. The Lord knows your weakness. For those of you who have been following me, you may have come across this message uh, that the Lord gave to me 150 years and revelations of God's grace. Please listen to this message. The link is in the description box. It will give you a deeper understanding of how God relates with us. It is time to go back to the Lord. The Lord is coming soon. Let's get ready. If you are in church and you are living a lukewarm life, if you are just a churchgoer, not born again, it's time to get born again. If you are not a Christian, please, if you come across this message, it means the Lord wants you to change. Repent of your sins and be saved. You can't repent because you have power to follow the Lord. No, you don't need your own strength to follow the Lord. By strength, no man prevails. It is not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It's of God that showeth mercy. If you're ready, he supplies all the grace that you need. It is not by our own strength that we get saved. It is by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So don't see that you are too far away from the Lord or that you have sinned, you can't come back to Him. If you are in church and you are possessed, please know that the Lord is waiting for you. 
you are not a castaway. Rather, cast that evil spirit away and make the body open for the Lord to stay. This is the time to seek the Lord with the whole of our hearts. I want to pray with you. Oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Every single one of us, the grave is waiting for us. The grave is waiting for us. Every one of us, six feet underground. That is our resting place till our bodies shall be redeemed. Lord, we ask that you help us now that we are alive. There are some of us, our speed is too slow. But you are not concerned about the speed, Lord. You are mostly concerned about the state of the heart. Lord, help us. Help us many that are weak in the faith. Help those who do not know you. Help those who are willing to follow, but are weak. And Lord, I also pray for us many that have been bound by the devil. Those Satan has poisoned their lives with different kind of entanglements, with different kind of demonic spirits. Lord, I pray for their deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you loose in the name of Jesus. Be free, be delivered. As you invite the Lord into your heart, may the power of the Lord, the power that is in the blood of Jesus, set you free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be set loose. Now, in the name of Jesus, be free. Lord, I pray for as many that are sick, as many that are afflicted by the devil. May your healing touch them now. Be healed. If you are sick, touch the place. If you are sick, lift it up before the Lord. I say you are healed in the name of Jesus. Be free. Those who have financial challenges, may the Lord settle your case. Receive healing in your financial life. Those who are homeless, those who are facing troubles in their walk with God, today receive divine touch. Receive strength to forge ahead. Lord, I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry. Lord, support them. Take away troubles from their lives. Take away lack from their lives. May the Lord help you to enter the kingdom so that you can reap everything you have contributed to the growth of the kingdom of God on earth. May you never miss it. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. If you need counseling, especially for those of you who may need deliverance, you are very much free to contact me. My details are on the screen. And don't be afraid that your secrets are going to be toyed with. I don't do that. Don't allow anything hinder you from getting delivered. If you have anybody that can conduct deliverance for you, please do so. But I also want to warn that be careful so that you don't meet a satanic agent who will push you inside the kingdom you are coming out of from. There are times people go for deliverance instead of them getting delivered. They push them inside the mall or even translate them from one kingdom into another kingdom. A deeper or higher one. So please be careful. Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Be very, very careful. Don't allow just anybody to lay hands on you. I know why I am telling you this. A lot of people are using demonic powers to pollute the children of God who want to come out so that they don't come out. I appreciate as many that have been supporting my ministry. May the Lord God Almighty replenish you. Thank you and God bless you. Please don't forget to share this video with someone. It is going to help someone. Please share this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you and God bless you. Bye for now.